Hello and welcome to this video. So now we've got view set up, we can start building the application. First thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add a button below our message here. So I'm going to type a button or B-U-T-T and enter, I get it done for me. And I'm just going to type load data in between here and save. So you should be seeing then on the website, I've really zoomed mine in here for later on so we can see everything, but you should be seeing here a load data button that you can click. Now, one of the great things about Vue and many web frameworks, to be honest, not just Vue, is that they make the process of clicking and doing stuff like that. So interaction with the web page a lot easier than writing pure JavaScript. And what I want to do is I want us to be able to write something to the console whenever we click the button. So to do that, what we need to do is inside app.js, we need to define a new section and we need to define this section on our app and call it methods. And methods, just like data, is an object, except it will contain functions. And the syntax for writing a function in here is done in key value. So I'm going to type a key load data, and the value is a function. Now in JavaScript, there are many ways to define a function in terms of syntax. So we're going to type function, and then curly braces, and then these squiggly braces. So this is a slightly odd way of declaring a function because when we're doing it with a key here and then the value under that key is a function which will then be executed. But you could, to all intents and purposes, see it almost like in Python load data with two curly braces like that. And then in JavaScript and in many languages, so Java, C Sharp, C, C++, things like that, the code that belongs to a function, rather than being indented like with Python, simply is written between these uh, squiggly brackets or these curly braces here. So when we use this load data function, any of the code inside these curly braces will then be executed. So inside here, we're going to do console.log and then load data was clicked. You should always finish your statements in JavaScript with a semicolon. You actually don't need to because the browser will process it anyway. It's a good and a bad thing. The browser tends to be able to do a lot for you, which can make debugging very difficult. But you should really end it with a semicolon, so we will here. And save this file. And now when I go back to the browser, I'm just going to clear the console here and click the load data. You'll see that nothing happens. Well, the reason nothing has happened is that whilst we've declared our load data here, we haven't actually said inside the index.html where the function should be called. And we want the function to be called when we click on this button. So just zoom in a little bit. The way we do this in Vue is we type an at and then a click. And that tells Vue that we want to execute some code on the Vue object when we click this particular element, which in this case is the button. And what we want to do is we want to execute our load data function. So we simply need to type load data. So now when I go back to the browser and click the load data, you can see in the console we get the load data was clicked. So we know that our button is working. However, rather than just write something to the console, what we'd like to do is load our data from our data.json. So inside the load data here, we're going to make use of something called a fetch library in JavaScript. So as Python comes with loads of built-in libraries and you've used quite a few of them, JavaScript also comes with lots of built-in functionality. And one of those functionalities is fetch. That's used for fetching data from some other kind of server. Now in our case, we're just loading it directly from a file which is in the static folder. But if you imagine we were going to an API somewhere else to get some data like Oanda's API, then we would use the fetch library to do that. There's also a, something called an Axios library and other libraries that do that as well. The simplest one for our use case is fetch. So when we do it, we're going to type const response is equal to await fetch data.json. Now there's quite a lot going on here that I'd like to explain. Now the whole course is not a JavaScript tutorial, so I'm going to remain brief, but we're declaring a new variable here, but we're saying that it's actually a constant here. Now in Python, a constant you would not be able to change in any way. In JavaScript, you actually can. If it's an object, the actual object can't be redeclared in the memory, but what's inside the object can be. So here we're saying we've got our response. We're never going to redeclare this variable response inside this function. And that then stores the result of fetching the contents of data.json. But we have this await keyword here. So why are we using this? Well, when we make requests, those requests have to be done asynchronously because it might take a while for the server that we're requesting data from to reply to us. So we have to tell JavaScript that we want to wait for that to happen before executing any of the further code in the function. 
Now to do that means we're doing something that's called an asynchronous request. So wherever we have the await, we actually need to use what's called an asynchronous function. So we need to type async before the function so that we execute this function asynchronously so that JavaScript knows to do it on another thread and not to block the interface or anything like that and then call this and then wait for this to return before executing any more of the code. So whenever we call load data, the interface won't be blocked and here it will wait on this line, line 8, until it's loaded the details inside data.json. We then need to, from this response, actually get the data out of the response. So we're going to type const data is equal to await and then response.json. And now what we're doing here, again, is another asynchronous operation, but we're just waiting for the response data to be converted for us into JSON data, which is essentially a dictionary, and that's something then that uh, the web application can read. What I'd like to do now then is just log these to the console. So we'll type console.log response and console.log data. So saving that then, back into the web page then, I've just refreshed the page and also cleared the, uh, the console as well. I'm going to go to network here and clear again and then just click load data. And you can see here that we've made a request. We've requested the file data.json from this domain of localhost 5500, which we are, we've got a get, and we returned a 200, which is a status OK. If I click on the particular request here, then a little menu, I'm quite zoomed in here, but has opened up here to tell us all about the uh, request that we've made. And importantly, here we've got the response that we got. And you can see that the JSON response is a list of objects here which represent the data inside the file. If I go back to the console, what we can see is some details of the response, which we've logged. So the status was OK, so code 200, uh, some various other information as well, where we got it from. And then we're logging this JSON data on the second line. And as you can see, that's all the data that we created from our Python code, which we saved into the JSON file. So the last thing we'd like to do then is actually get this, rather than print it in the console, we'd like this information loaded up onto the screen. So we're going to, underneath the button here, type PRE, so pre-formatted text tag here. And we want to do some more interpolation inside here. This time we're not looking for a variable, we're just going to write some JavaScript. And we're going to say json.stringify. So that basically says take some JSON data and make it into a string, formatted string for the, uh, for the web page. And in brackets we have to say what we actually want to stringify. And there we're going to say KPI data and then null and then two. And this will just format the JSON nicely to, for us so that we can read it. The problem you may have noticed, of course, is that we don't actually have any KPI data defined. So if we do this and I go back into the web page and refresh and hit load data, we don't actually get anything shown on the page here because our KPI data is not defined. Now, if we were using Python, we would have had an error or warning here telling us, watch out, this isn't defined and the program would have crashed. JavaScript, however, for better or for worse, just carries on working anyway. And you'll notice that we get a warning up here in the console that KPI data is not defined, but the actual application itself carries on running without any issues. I can keep clicking load data and the data is loading and being printed inside the console. So back inside the app.js then, we need to define a new piece of data, which will be our KPI data. And we'll set this to start with to undefined. So when the app first loads, it isn't actually containing anything. What we need to be able to do is set our KPI data equal to this data when this load data function is executed. So deleting all of this here, I'm going to type this dot KPI data is equal to data. Now in this case, this is very similar to the self in Python. So we're referring to the KPI data that's defined on this object here. Now you might be thinking it's defined on data and then KPI data, but what view actually does is it takes anything inside this data key when it's creating the app and makes these keys here variables of the actual app variable itself. It's a little bit confusing when you first start using view, but app.kpi data is created by view when we create the application. So we need to say here this referring to this app object that this function is running on dot KPI data is equal to our data. So saving that then and going back into the web page, if I now click load data, you can see that we get our KPI data loaded up on the screen. 
Good, so we've made a lot of progress already. In a couple of videos, we were able to load our Forex KPIs onto the web page. Now we have to make it look a little bit better than it does here. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always below the video. Otherwise, see you in the next one.